Start of our fourth quarter, 35-17, Utah State. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott back in Logan. Air Force football, Isaiah Sanders jumps ahead for a first down gain that nets 10. Nice run at long strides. Sanders, boy, he is a good looking athlete. 6'2", 210, Palmer Ridge High School, Colorado Springs, literally right next door to the Air Force Academy. His nickname is Zay. And at 44 carries for almost 200 yards last year against the Aggies. We'll throw it here. It's caught. Sanders has it. That's another Air Force first down. Rockamore brought him down after a gain of 24. Very talented. Very talented is that young man. Ball comes out quick. This time wrapped up. He'll lose a couple. Tay got there. That's Justice Tay. Second and 11, a minute into the fourth. Yeah, the pursuit, the pursuit and flow to the ball by Utah State. I mean, they're they're. They're a different team this year facing Air Force. They are really getting after it. Option. Erickson. Nowhere to run. Naliai with the stop. Naliai could just flat out run. You know, Keith Patterson told us this week, message to his guys, don't get bored. Eyes are the key. Stay sound vertically. There have been a couple of busts here and there, but for the most part, this defense has performed at a much higher level than what we saw a year ago down in Colorado Springs. And they need to stop here. Pump fake, end zone, flag on the field. Now Bennett was down there. He was double covered. Tom, the pass was high, but contact around the five yard line. Holding defense, number seven. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Results in an automatic first down. D.J. Williams. That's a tough penalty because they did have him double covered. They didn't need to hold him. It was going to have to. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. It was going to have to be a perfect throw to squeeze it in between defenders. So just kind of a, a bad penalty that time by the Utah State secondary. Late pitch, Remsburg, nifty move. Touchdown, Air Force. And the Falcons right back in it. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna credit quarterback Sanders on that one because he somehow gets the ball just out of the grasp of Naliai, the edge defender there, and flips it to, to Remsburg. Going for two here. They bring in the third team quarterback, Donald Hammond. And Hammond will fling it to the end zone. Caught by Wagons Pack for the two point conversion. And it's a 10 point game. Troy Calhoun always managing the game. Wagons Pack with a nice play. I love the fact that Donald Hammond comes in. Is he warmed up? Of course he's warmed up. What does he do? Go ahead and fire a two-point conversion. Keep it close. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Thirty-five, twenty-five. Matt Wells with a ten-point advantage over his Mountain West rival Air Force, and the Falcons right back in it. A touchdown and two-point conversion moments ago. Here's Scarver across the twenty. It's been a rough night for eighty-one and White, and he lost it again. He lost it again. Air Force recovers, and that's a Falcons touchdown.
Christopher Musselman with a 21-yard return for the six points and a chance to make this a one-possession game or a field goal game with the extra point to come. And Musselman ripped the ball out of Scarver's hands. Just ripped it out and took off running the other way. He got it out. The Air Force coverage team kept Scarver up on his feet. And Musselman makes the play of the day thus far. Wow. Scarver had the big drop in the first half. Another drop in the third quarter. And that time just got overpowered. 35, 32, 13 minutes to go. And a brand new game here in Logan. You know, sometimes you want a quick whistle, Roy. They don't get it. They keep them up. And, and I mean, that's almost, that's as almost well designed as, as some of the triple option plays we've seen by Air Force tonight. Just excellent execution on special teams. And both these programs do such a great job. And there you have it. Ball got never a, touched the ground. Got ourselves a ball game. Stripped it out of there, and Musselman with the play of the game. Smart plan. You know, it's the things you work on in practice, the things that you get good at. The good programs are always working on stripping the ball, turning turnovers into points. And the Falcons do just that. And now Gerald Bright back deep to receive the kickoff from Jake Conkey. Boy, it went from an 18-point game to a three-point game in about a blink of an eye. Fair catch called for by Bright. The ball was fair caught inside the 25-yard line. By rule, it will be placed at the 25, first down. So Matt Wells now searching for momentum. Now with just a three-point lead and all this time remaining, it's a brand-new contest. Well, it, it, it kind of is reminiscent of the game they played last year, and I ended up going back and looking at it this morning just because the coaches kept talking about it on both sides, Utah State and Air Force, yesterday in our meetings. I'm like, I'm going to go back and watch it. 2017 game. Well, there were 28 points scored in the fourth quarter a year ago. Love. Tarver. One of the few times tonight he hasn't come up clutch. Now he's been he has been clutch all night long. Tarver has had a really nice night. Nine catches, 128 yards, 12 targets. That's 13 targets now with nine catches. And Tom, you can feel the life being sucked out of this packed house. As loud and as rowdy as the herd have been all night long, the U Utah State student section. And the momentum shifted. And they're going to back him up five yards. And the tempo has slowed for Utah State. False start. Offense on number 51 and number 70. That's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Great crowd here tonight for the Mountain West Conference opener for both sides. Matt Wells imploring the Utah State fan base this week to get off the couch. Let's have a wideout. They've done that. Arwen Thompson up to the 31. Sent out by Fedulum. That's a gain of seven. And a big play coming up right here. Aggies three of seven on third down tonight. They need four yards here. Crucial third down facing Utah State. And as Jordan Love looks to his sideline, there's 11 Falcon players looking at their sideline for a new defensive call. Thompson motions out. Love with time. Tarver dropped it. Utah State had exactly what they wanted, Roy. They had man-free coverage in the back end by Air Force, 
the, the free safety was shading Tarver's way, but if Tarver makes the catch, he not only has the first down, he has a chance to maybe kind of wiggle free and, and get a much larger gain, just unable to come down with the ball. Heinze, Cleveland calls for the fair catch, and he'll make it after a 41-yard punt. Air Force with an opportunity, trailing on the road, 35-32. Wild weekend of college football, Sports Center from Los Angeles tonight. And after Arizona State and Washington over on ESPN with Stan and Neil, Herb Street and Fowler will give you their reaction on the Pac-12 showdown, the euphoria in Eugene for Stanford. You're not going to believe this. Plus, Urban Meyer back with the Buckeyes. Big win over Tulane. All that and much more Sports Center after the game on ESPN and the ESPN app. Back in Logan, Utah, Maverick Stadium. Air Force with 17 unanswered points and the Falcons with a chance to steal one on the road and plenty of time remaining, 12-15 on the clock. Falcons have won the last three in this series. Sanders, punishing run across the 30. Well, remember Sanders, last November 25th, 2017, 44 carries a buck 96. He's slow to get up there. Yeah, he is. And Sanders banged up. Out for an injured player. Well, Arian Worthman was injured, did not play against Florida Atlantic two weeks ago. And after the open date, he appears to be good to go. But Air Force offense with two in blue under center, not nearly as dynamic tonight. Isaiah Sanders, 19 carries, 49 yards. Yeah, 6 for 10, 93 yards throwing. He's been dynamic for sure. Well, the big play, if you're tuning in late tonight, Utah State was in control. Air Force punched in a touchdown and a two-point play on the ensuing kickoff. Savon Scarver was stripped by Christopher Musselman. And then 35 in blue rumbled to the end zone for another quick touchdown to make this a one-possession game. And just one of the craziest plays you'll see. Scarver, Tom, may have had his forward progress halted. You mentioned there was no quick whistle. That benefited Air Force. It did. Oh, without question, not having a quick whistle on a kickoff return. I mean, that's exactly why that play was allowed to happen. Worthman back in at quarterback. And Fagan rumbles across the 35. A gain of four. Ferguson with a stop. Third and one. Fagan, first down. Well, again, that fullback dive has been good to Air Force all night long. Fagan, tough between the tackles. Looks like an injured Time player. Time for an injured player. And this would be a big loss, yeah. Tipanali. TCU transfer. Isaiah Sanders exiting Merlin Olsen Field here moments ago as Nali is attended to. You're gonna run the triple option. You're going to take your fair share of hits. A couple times, his head came down on the turf. It is artificial turf late. Yeah, I just couldn't see. I, I couldn't see where or how he was injured, and I'm not even sure what, what was injured. I can only speculate, which I won't do when a player is injured. Nali with 10 stops, heads to the sideline. 
Air Force first and ten, trailing by three. Cleveland on the option pitch with a running lane. There he goes. Ronald Cleveland ushered out around the 40. Flag on the field after a pickup of 19. A uh, late flag, and they're gonna they're gonna call a hold on Air Force down the field, and that's a shame because that was a well-designed play. Holding on the offense, number seven. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, and it'll remain first down. Gerard Sanders had the big pickup on third and long on the last Air Force possession. I thought, Roy, just by design and how they set this play up, they had a receiver lined up about two yards from the sideline, so they were able to get Cleveland in space, and they had blockers out in front, and then Sanders just had his hands all over the defender's jersey. The flag came out. After the first down, they'll back it up. It'll be first and seven. And a quick handoff close to midfield goes Rimsburg. Now Rimsburg's been very active tonight. Now into the early morning hours back east. I love Rimsburg's quick feet. I mean, he keeps those feet moving. He's explosive at the line of scrimmage and through the hole. Three-point game. Worthman flushed. Flings it incomplete out of bounds. Dalton Baker applying pressure. Falcons 10 of 20 on third down. Naliai is off the field, but he's riding the bike on the far sideline, so he's not a factor in pass rush right now. And Air Force probably likely to keep it on the ground here on third down. Mallard in the backfield, gets the handoff, makes a move, and dives forward. That last second plunge should result in a first down. Great second effort that time. Christian Mallard really gets stymied right at the point. Then he's able to spin out of it and just lunge ahead. There's Nalii on the bike. And Clear why he came off the field. Might have. The only reason a guy gets on a bike, try to loosen something up. Falcons approaching 300 yards on the ground. Cole Fagan straight ahead. And Air Force perfectly content. Use the clock. Let that triple option go back to work. Yeah, they'll just keep chugging away. I mean, for sure. They, they like to stay on schedule. Much like Navy and Army running triple option, they get their three and a half yards of carry. They're okay with it. When you come up shy of three and a half yards, then you gotta dive back into the goodie bag. Worthman on second down. Bring up third and short, gain of five. They like that design quarterback sweep. They pick up an extra blocker with an added fullback or wingback leading up into the hole and you know when you have a guy like Worthman able to run the ball and Sanders earlier before he got hurt I mean you have dynamic players doing that so far tonight Air Force 11 to 21 on third down crucial third and three on the 90th play tonight for the Air Force offense w Worthman bottled up Tay got there just as Tay. He's going to lose three. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, Tay out of Mission Hills High School in San Diego. And just a great play that time. Again, doing his job. He's responsible for quarterback. He scrapes along the line of scrimmage. And sure enough, number 51 takes down Arian Worthman. Charlie Scott from the 45. Reaches the end zone. Jordan Nathan bolted out of there. It'll be first and 10 for Utah State. Holding serve at home by three.
7.33 remaining. Back in Logan, Utah, the Aggies with a 35-32 lead. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott. More than one way to skin a cat. You see the numbers from tonight. Air Force almost twice as many plays. Over 400 yards. Utah State in its quick strike offense has been equally impressive, but they have cooled off these last three possessions and a slow start here on first down. Blake Daly, the hit. Yeah, the longest scoring drive Utah State had. 77 yards, 251 off the clock. Aggies use tempo. Love rolled out. Pass is caught by Dax Raymond. And Raymond had a touchdown in the third quarter. We'll have a first down here. Raymond, that's his fourth catch tonight with a touchdown. It's over 60 yards receiving, 68 to be exact. There goes Bright. Gerald Bright, far side, untouched. Touchdown, Aggies. 70 yards. Uh, David Yost, the offensive coordinator for the Aggies, told us, he said, you know, I love passing, but really my DNA is in the run game. And, and he loves his running backs. And Gerald Bright taking one to the house. And the Aggies needed that one. After giving up 17 unanswered, Everly's extra point makes it a 10 point contest. Gerald Bright, you know, again, how, how, how long, how much did Utah State, how long do they need to have the ball? Three plays, 80 yards, 41 seconds. Just watch the right side of the line. They just get hats on hats, and it's more or less a zone, re, kind of a zone concept, more of an outside zone rush. And Gerald Bright, again, just stays patient and, and picks up the running lane and then he hits it full speed, and man, when he's hitting at full speed, it's an impressive sight because he gets on the edge immediately, and they're rewarded with a 70-yard touchdown run by Gerald Bright. Now his teammate Darwin Thompson in the backfield has been held in check tonight. He was averaging more than a 10 yards per attempt coming in, but it's Gerald Bright after that last scamper. Nine carries, 97 yards. Pick your poison in the Aggies' backfield. Yeah, you know the center, Quinn, Quinn Ficklin, really had a nice reach block, and he was the one that kind of was the impetus to start that nice blocking at the point of attack. And you get an extra hat and a nice reach block by the center, and that's what happens. Your back can really kind of capture the edge and take it to the house. Well, this game's so important for both sides. The conference opener, you want to set the tone for the rest of league play. Hey, Mountain West. Well, and as you mentioned, Roy, early on, Matt Wells, 31 and nine here at home. They, they're a, they're a tough out. Sanders back in at quarterback. Cleveland nowhere to run. Well, that play looked doomed from the get-go. Utah State's defense. It is is playing with renewed vigor. They're a different team. We saw them. We've seen them each of the last couple of years, and we've mentioned them being talented. They're talented both sides of the ball. They got interior linemen both sides of the ball, and a lot of talent on the edge. Remsburg near side on second and ten. They'll pick up five. DJ Williams got away with a more or less was a questionable late hit on along the sidelines. Now you wonder if this will be four down territory already for the Falcons. Probably so. Smith in motion. Sanders bottled up. Fourth and two. You know, I'd say what, you know, what, what do the analytics say? The analytics say if you're Air Force, you've been pretty successful on fourth down tonight. You've been three for three. 
Calhoun feels comfortable. Crowd back in it. They've gone with quarterback, dive game, following the fullback in some of these short yardage situations. They'll do it again. Sanders. I believe he got it. He'll move the chains. Yeah. Wasn't by much. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's as close as you can get. Sanders again following Cole Fagan. And that, that's all extra effort there by, by Sanders. Went out with an injury earlier. Come back. How tough is this kid? And again, what a leader. The attributes that these two young men at quarterback, I'd say all three quarterbacks in the Air Force, did an awfully good job. Sanders under center, quick pitch to Remsburg, makes a move, there's another, first down Air Force into plus territory. Remsburg is nifty. That's just nice vision. His head's kind of just calm while he's running. His legs are going 100 miles an hour and his eyes are just looking at where he wants to go. Remsburg approaching the century mark now with 95 yards on the ground. Sanders wants to throw it here. Flushed. Flings it. Yes. Cleveland with a diving attempt out of bounds. They're going to say he caught it. I believe he did. And Cleveland appears to be shaken up again. But Cleveland, he's just a baller. Dude can play. Timeout. We have a timeout for an injured player. Timeout for an injured player. Second time tonight, Cleveland's rolled, been rolled up on the sideline. One time he got crashed into the equipment boxes on the sideline. And uh, if they review that one, that's going to be that's going to be called an incompletion. He catches it, but the ball is hitting the the white out of bounds area. The ruling on the previous play of a completed catch is under further review. Mark Marshin, our replay official tonight. And Matt Wells. Troy Calhoun understanding the importance of this booth review once again. Meanwhile, Cleveland appears to be okay. Indisputable video evidence. Did he maintain possession? Did he complete the action of the catch? Ball seems to have popped out towards the turf before he was able to do either one of those things. You know, it's, it's interesting, Roy, just the way the game has gone. Very close in yardage are the two teams, but in terms of time of possession, Air Force just way ahead, 38 minutes to 14.52 for Utah State. But I think more importantly, 27, 27 first downs for Air Force, only 22 for Utah State. Troy Calhoun said, he said the team, he thought the team that had the most first downs might win the game. I would agree, however, the way Utah State has scored tonight really has put the pressure on Air Force to be so good on every snap. Indisputable video evidence there? I think this one's incomplete. I think it's I think it's getting gonna get overruled. I agree. As it stands now, first and ten at the Utah State 34. I've been really impressed with Ronald Cleveland tonight, though. He, he's become a really fine football well, player. Well, you mentioned it earlier. We had Air Force twice last year, and there were some weapons. It was a work in progress. It felt like at times up front. This offense appears to have a different gear. With Remsburg, Erickson, and Cole Fagan, this reminds you of some of their more potent triple option teams from, let's say, four or five years ago. Yeah, Isaiah Sanders, too. I mean, he really can stretch a defense. And they're dynamic. They're young. They're going to make a couple mistakes, but they can get out on the edge pretty quick. Winner of this 
home game will improve to 1-0 in the Mountain West. Two teams have faced off every year since Utah State joined the Mountain West Conference back in 2013. Here's the call. After further review, the ball hit the ground prior to the receiver gaining possession. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10 at the 50-yard line. So that'll negate a 16-yard gain and a first down. Got the crowd fired back up. <laughs> Crowd's been in it tonight. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. Puts a lot of pressure, though, on this down and this series. I think you're in four-down territory the rest of the evening now. No question. 4.27 to go. Fig in the fullback. Now the lead blocker. Sanders twists his way to a five-yard gain. Rockamore, the tackle. And precious seconds ticking off the clock. Now Rockamore, 12 tackles tonight. He, he has been very busy. There goes Sanders. Needed five, he'll gain three. And Rockamore give him 13 stops. Shaq Bond also in to help him out. Well, the eye discipline of Utah State defense is, is almost improving. They've seen the play over and over again. That quarterback kind of lead play with the fullback coming. Air Force four for four. Onward down. Play action for Sanders. Has a man. Pass is caught. Move the chains. Marcus Bennett, another grab. He's been clutch. Just, just a fantastic play call. Mike Thiessen dialing it up. Troy Calhoun. And then Sanders just spinning it. Boy, he's good throwing on the run. From the 25. Sanders to the air again, flings it. Cleveland grabs it. It's a gain of seven. Shaq Bond with a tackle. These are some of the best throwers I've seen in Air Force in a long time. Both Sanders and Worthman can, they can spin it, but Sanders is really, really talented. I mean, he is patient, great vision down the field. Sanders again across the middle. Pass is broken up, incomplete. D.J. Williams with a tight coverage. D.J. Williams. Sanders. Yeah, D.J. Williams got away with one. I thought he was riding on Sanders' back. And the ball was very well placed. Sanders puts it right where he needed to, but Williams has his arms wrapped, draped all over his backside. Somehow the flag doesn't come out. Third and three. Falcons with all three timeouts remaining. And Sanders close to the 25. They're going to spot it short again. And I thought he, I didn't think he followed his blocker for the first time tonight. I thought he dipped inside too early. Ten in the box for Utah State on fourth down. Sanders! I don't think he got there. Utah State football. Keith Patterson, the D coordinator for the Aggies. I mean, he's a quarter of the way out. He's out by the numbers. The get back coach couldn't even haul him in. David Woodward. Met Sanders. Almost in the air, head on. That initial contact more than enough for the Aggies. I'll tell you what, they, they slammed the door shut right there. That was, that was a lot of elbows there. Air Force three timeouts. Gerald Bright off right tackle. He'll gain three. 
Yeah, you said 10 in the box. I, I think they had all 11 guys set, just stacked in there. Air Force calls his first time out of the second half. Timeout on the field as we step aside, 2.03 remaining. Huge weekend of college football concluding tonight and also coming up. We'll get started next weekend. Ohio State, Penn State, whiteout conditions in Happy Valley inside Beaver Stadium. Coverage begins 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and, of course, streaming live on the ESPN app. Falcons with two timeouts remaining. Jordan Love's going to throw it. And now we'll tuck and run. He'll pick up a yard. Another timeout will be called by Air Force. And we appreciate those staying up late timeout. on the East Coast. Air Force, their second timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout, 30 seconds in length. And also those with a vested interest, perhaps, in this one. This is kind of like the, the warm-up whiteout. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. As crazy as it was, Virginia Tech losing the number 13 team in the country to Old Dominion. Everybody in the top 10, all 11, if you will, won this weekend. How about that? Held serve, you know, and that's, that's impressive. I mean, there were a couple games in question, obviously, two OT games. Army scaring the heck out of Oklahoma. Jeff Muckin, what a great job he's done Boy. with the Black Knights. We saw him against Duke back in week one, and, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. Stanford has a good team. David Shaw has a good team this year. A miraculous win yep. up at Autzen Stadium. And we'll see what that means for Bryce Love, Dr. Love, as they were calling him on game day. On third down, Bright will be stopped short. And one timeout left for Air Force. They'll use it here. Yep. Timeout. Air Force. This is their third and final timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. 30 seconds in length. Would the game clock operator please reset the game clock to 1 minute and 55 seconds, please. 1 minute and 55 seconds. So that'll bring up fourth down. You see the scoring drives tonight. I think we said it a couple of times. They didn't take long for the most part. Uh, it's just remarkable, really, Roy, when you think about it. You know, the longest drive they have, two minutes, 51 seconds, really? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, and they snapped off a couple big ones. I mean, the 70-yard run by Bright at, at a crucial time. You know, they just get great blocking at the point of attack. It just goes to show you how well coached they are, the balance they have on offense. Jordan Love, just a spectacular night. 26 of 38, 356, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Had 250 at halftime. Yeah. Heinze gets it out of there. Beautiful putt. Cleveland retreats. And that ball's going to keep on rolling. A 67-yard punt. Crushed it. Utah State known for its quality special teams. They've returned a couple of kicks this year for scores. And Heinze getting the job done here, 63 and white. Kind of a weird number for a punter. Isn't it? <laughs> right? <laughs> I, What's he I, doing? You know what I'm thinking in my head? Well, one of these days, they're going to earn themselves some good numbers. <laughs> Says the quarterback. Maybe Matt Wells likes him to have numbers in the 60s. I don't know. Now the Falcons need a quick score and an onside kick. Sanders' pocket was collapsing. Bennett was knocked down quickly. He'll make the catch. A day away applied the pressure, and I tell you what, Sanders fortunate to get rid of it. Yeah, a lot of good efforts by a lot of people there. D.J. Williams, too, right on top of Marcus Bennett. Great stretch to get out of bounds by Bennett after a fine catch. The clock stops. Air Force out of timeouts, trailing by two scores. Contact, no flag. D.J. Williams again covering Marcus Bennett. 
Yeah, it really hurts not having timeouts. And, you know, it's not like Air Force is throwing a lot of two-minute offense. They work on it, I guarantee you that. But their DNA is triple option, some bootleg, some play action. But now you really have to get – you've got to get a huge chunk down the field. But you also have to be mindful, Roy. You've got to get a first down. Tom, the Aggies come in tonight as a nine-and-a-half point favorite. How about that? Sanders, the pump fake. Down he goes. Naliai back in the game, applying the pressure. It's a loss of six. Fourth and five. Keep an eye on Nolly at number 10. Incomplete. No flag on the field. And Utah State's going to hold on. Well, we knew it would be a great game. And it has been a great game. It's been very impressive, both sides. Utah State, boy, they, they pack a lot of punch at offense. But they played tenacious defense in the second half. Aggies are going to make it three wins in a row. Behind the accurate passing of Jordan Love, a couple of big plays on the ground led by Gerald Bright. And Matt Wells is going to end the three-game losing skid to Air Force. They'll have to kneel down one more time. Yep, Air Force no timeouts. Victory formation. Matt Wells awfully happy along the sideline. Air Force is a better team than what it was last year. Utah State is a much better team. Yeah. I don't know if this is a statement victory for the Aggies. The rest of the Mountain West Conference is watching this game tonight thinking, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do against well, this offense? Well, remember the Aggies going to Michigan State. Yeah, they collected a nice paycheck, million three, million four, but they almost shocked the, the Spartans. They lost that game 38-31, but they've been on a tear since, Roy, and I think, I think those tough games harden people, and Matt Wells wants to be known as a tough, smart program, and they wore that tonight. Aggies improve to three and one. First time since 2012 they've hit that mark. And for just the second time since 1978. And Matt Wells has him pointed in the right direction. Our final score tonight here in Logan, Utah, 42 to 32. The Aggies are victorious. For Tom Ramsey, I'm Roy Philpott. Stay tuned. Coming up next, it's college football final.